Hi everybody, my name is Matthew. I'm with Shree Memorial Library, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about resin art. Resin art is a fun craft that um, you can do to make different things, anything from small as jewelry, to paperweights, to useful things like coasters. Um, even on a large scale, you can make a, uh, I've seen where they have made coffee table uh, tops. So today's video, we are going to go through the different steps to make your resin art. We're gonna talk about the different molds that you'll need or that you can use. Uh, I'll show you the different um, pigment powders that you can use and the tools that you'll need to make this uh, project. It's fairly simple and it's fun to make, so I hope you enjoy. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna show you some examples of the resin art that we have done here at the library. Start off, I'll show you this neat little coaster we did. Um, so you'll see it has three different color powders mixed in. Um, we did this um, kind of light blue color here, where there is a darker blue here, and then this red powder we used here. We kind of, I kind of just swirled it around a little bit. And then if you notice where the powder did not mix, um, it left these cool little specks in uh, the product. So that's pretty cool. Next we have this cool little tray where I used similar methods of mixing different uh, pigments. It left this kind of cloudy effect in the tray um, I kind of swirled around the different colors and it, they mixed and then again I left some of the flakes here. We also have a couple of these just gem shapes. This one's pretty cool. It's got the cloudiness effect from the pigment powder. Then we have this one and this one we used um, two different colors of pigments actually. We used a black and a white and you see it kind of made this smoky effect throughout the little gem piece. Um, then we have these two little paperweights here. This one, it, as you'll see, has flowers in it. And what we did is we started out with our mold and we filled it with flowers. We arranged them so that the big one was at the bottom. Then we just filled it with flowers and arranged it and then poured the resin in it and let it sit. And then it made this nice little uh, paperweight. And similarly to this one, we used, we put a little bit of white pigment at the bottom and then we used blue pigment throughout the rest and it made this nice little paperweight. And finally, we have this um, nice little candle holder here. And the mold that it came from made these nice geometric shapes on it. All right, that is kind of a, just a little uh, overview of some of the ones that we have made uh, recently. Okay, real quickly, everybody, I'm gonna show you some examples of the um, pigment powders that we use. So um, they come in a variety of colors. There's actually more than what you see here. And you'll see there's like three different versions of blue. There's like a battleship gray, mahogany, copper. This copper actually makes a really cool color. Um, this nice yellow. So um, there are a plethora of colors that you can use this just be, uh, happens to be uh, just a sample of the ones that we use here at the library when we're making our um, resin art. So for example, this cobalt blue makes this nice color. And one thing I like about these pigments, um, it depends on how well you mix them on what, uh, what it'll look like. So this is pigment that's mixed pretty well so you'll see it's pretty uniform throughout. It's still got this little sparkly effect to it. But if you look at something like this, you'll see where 
it was just kind of not necessarily mixed but swirled through so this particular piece was made with the imperial red the cobalt blue and the uh, blue green color and so with this it makes these cool swirly effects and it also um, if you don't mix them really well it make it kind of makes these flakes throughout so the pigment's really fun <clears throat> to play with. Uh, you can see here where it really made the swirl effect. You have some clear resin, but then you also have some swirls of the pigment. So you can kind of play around with how you um, put your pigment. Pigments you can either put, um, you can put in your resin as you're mixing it, or like this, you can put your resin, your uh, pigment in it after you put the resin in the mold and then make cool swirls and designs with it. Okay, so let's talk about the molds that you use to make resin art. So as you see, there are a plethora of different types of molds you can use uh, as far as shapes go. The best um, mold that you can use and what you should always use for making resin art uh, is our silicone molds because they're very flexible and easy to get the uh, product out. So you have, I don't know, you have very simple shapes like this. This is just simply a cube. So you can put an object in here, fill it with your resin, and it makes a solid cube um, for example we made this one this paperweight that has a pine cone encased in it so it's actually um, really cool for saving heirlooms or different trinkets or whatnot um, you just have to be really really careful when you're making your resin art that you don't get bubbles in it because if you see in this particular piece, although it is really cool that the pine cone is encased in resin, it has a lot of bubbles in it. And the reason, particularly in this case, was there's a lot of air in the pine cone. And so uh, a lot of air came out and there's bubbles in the resin. But if you like that effect, then no problem at all. All right. Then you have more complex molds you have, um, for example, this, just by looking at it, at it, you can't really tell what it would make, but actually it makes this piece right here. And the reason why it's a little more complicated is it's not easy to get out of here. So that's why you wanna make sure you have really easy, flexible silicon molds. Um, Another thing you can do when you're trying to get your piece out of the mold is you can uh, put it in warm water and it makes it a little bit more flexible. But you can imagine getting this out of this can be a little difficult. But you have other uh, shapes. Um, for example, this is the shape that um, I use to make my coaster. So you can see this is the coaster that came out of here. Something to keep in mind, though, is your mold is basically reversed of your your item. So when the I when the coaster was in the mold, it was in the mold like this, right? And so when you're making it, this is the top. But when you are finished with your mold and the resin has set, you pop it out. You're going to turn it upside down. And then the, the what was the top is actually the bottom. So what you're what you're going to look at is really the bottom. So when you're making uh, resin art, you have to keep that in mind because certain things can sink to the bottom, and some things float. This particular mold right here, again, it's a silicone mold, and actually, interestingly enough, it's a baking mold. Uh, used for making like round cupcakes, I think. But when you're making your resin art, it's sitting in here like this. So you have to be careful 
because the flowers are, are not dense and so they float to the top, right? So you have to make sure that you arrange your pattern of whatever it is you're putting in here. In this case, the flowers, I had to make sure the flower that I wanted to see went into the bottom. So I put that in first and then put all my other flowers on top so that when they floated, they would be at that, what actually is the bottom. Because when you take your mold out, you flip it over and what is at the bottom is now at the top. And then you have other cool shapes. This is also a coaster. This is just a cool pyramid. This one is actually the mold that makes the gem shape. So it makes the shape like this. Okay, so these are the basics of what we're gonna need to make our resin art piece. So first and foremost, gloves. Gloves are very important. You do not want these materials on your hands. Um, so first, obviously you need your resin um, mixture your, and your hardener. You're gonna want a measuring cup. Here you'll see, uh, this is just a plastic cup and it has um, your measurements on the side. Um, something to stir with, like a popsicle stick. And then we have our pigments. I've chosen to use Imperial Red and Cobalt Blue. And we have our mold. This is just a, a nice square coaster mold. So to get started, I am going to measure equal parts of each of the resin and the hardener. So I'm going to start out with, I'm going to do one ounce of the resin. And you want to make sure that these are equal as possible. All right, that is my one ounce of resin. And next, I'm going to add one ounce of the hardener. So to do that, I'm just gonna take it from one ounce to two ounce. Make sure that's level. All right, perfect. So that is our mixture. Now I'm going to stir for three to five minutes. And I'm gonna make sure as I stir that I scrape from the sides because there is resin and hardener on the sides of our cup. And I'm gonna make sure I, I, I stir slowly so I don't introduce bubbles. All right, I've been stirring for five minutes now, and so it should be good and mixed together. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I did get some bubbles, but luckily most of those will rise to the surface once they are in our mold, once the resin is in our mold. Um, but in this particular case, because we're using pigment anyways, the uh, Bubbles won't matter as much because you won't see them, or it may even add a cool effect. All right, so now I'm going to take my mold and I'm going to go ahead and pour my first little batch of resin 
into my mold. Make sure you scrape out as much as you can to get it all in your mold. All right, good. So now our resin is in our mold. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some powder. And I could, if I wanted to make a solid color, I could have added the powder while I was mixing it. After about three minutes, I could have added the powder and then mixed it for the remaining two minutes. But this method, I'm going to add the powder after I put it in the resin so that I can get some cool effects. So I'm gonna start off with some cobalt blue. And it doesn't take much at all. Um, honestly, when you're mixing up the powder with the resin, it really just takes a few little flicks, put some there, put some there, and this stuff gets everywhere, so be very careful because it will stain. All right, so there's my cobalt blue, and I'm going to just kind of swirl it around in some however I want, kind of mix it in certain places. I can even push it down into the sides of my coaster. Get this mixed in. Just kind of swirl it around, mix it together. Do some designs. And these really, really make great gifts. Um, and it, you know, it, it's something you made yourself. And so it makes it a little bit more special. And it's just a really fun project. All right, so there's my cobalt blue mixed in and swirled a bit. Next, I'm going to add some of this imperial red. Just be very, very careful. Again, it does not take much at all. Okay. So now I'll mix that in. Good. And of course, because it's red and blue, that's going to make purple. So depending on how I swirl this, I'm going to have areas of purple, I'm going to have areas of blue, and I'm going to have areas of red if they're not mixed in very well. So I'm just going to take my popsicle stick and just make some cool swirls and designs, however I want it to look. kind of like a marbled effect. So I'm done mixing it, and there you go. The last step is to just let it sit up. It's going to harden. It's going to start hardening pretty quickly. Uh, it'll seem to be hard in about an hour or so, but it's still going to be very flexible. So you're going to want to leave it in your mold um, for uh, another 24 hours, and even up to 48 hours if possible. It'll make it even better. So I want to try to get you a little close up here. 
So that's what it looks like now. It's obviously very liquidy, but like I said, it will start to harden up and you'll have your resin art piece. And again, I'll show you an example. Let me take my gloves off. <clears throat> Once it is finished and taken out of the mold, you'll have a nice little piece like this. All right, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. The uh, items that we used in this video mostly came from Amazon, but you can purchase them from just about any craft store. Um, but anyways, thank you for watching and see you next time.